there are 12 players cut. However, some will be back as part of the eight-man practice squad that can be formed after 12 noon tomorrow. Here's who's looking for work tonight. On the defensive side, defensive tackle Glenn Steele and Greg Scott. Third-year strong safety Marquand Manuel loses out in the numbers game. Linebacker Allen Augustin, who made an interception in Friday's win over the Colts. Larry Stevens and defensive end Elton Patterson, a seventh-round draft choice last year. On offense, speedster Jamal Broussard dropped, as is Adam Ziesel. Maurice Mann and Kevin Walter claim the final roster spots. Tight end James Whalen can't beat out Matt Schobel. Releasing Alex Sulstad and Pete Lockheed leave just nine offensive linemen. And fullback Alex Wade is cut. Only one rookie free agent makes the team, punter Kyle Larson. By the way, linebacker Adrian Ross, remember him? He was cut by the Steelers today. One week from today, the Bengals season gets underway for real, taking on the Jets. You can see the game live from the Meadowlands right here on Local 12, starting at 1 o'clock next Sunday. Now, you know this team is already, they're all ready to live up to the height, sure they are, but first they have to get past all those nagging injuries. I'm not really worried, guys. You know, you know, guys just really have to step up. It's part of football, and um, you know, guys are living in the training room, trying to get themselves better. But um, it's all a part of the game. It's all a part of um, you know reality. We are excited, you know, that we didn't go on four or one and three, you know, uh, and out of the two wins, we are. Uh, be some good teams so you know uh, that tell us that uh, if we put our mind to it uh, put in the work you know we could do it tonight you make the call dial us up and register your vote how well will the Bengals do this season will they have a losing year even 500 a winning season with no playoffs or a winning season with a postseason berth we want to know what you think of the team give us a call 345-1212 or vote on Bengals Nation at WKRC.com we'll have results Welcome back to the Sports Authority. One week from today, we will know if the Bengals make a successful debut against the Giants or get off to another dismal beginning like last season. That's against the Jets next Sunday. Here to help sort it all out, the Who Asked You gang. So let's head to the interview set with Marshall Harris. Welcome to Who Asked You. We bring in our panel of experts, three of them in fact. We start of course with Richard Skinner from Homer 1360, former Bengals great. Joe Walter and, of course, Kevin Goheen from the Cincinnati Post, beat writer for the Bengals. Guys, the preseason's over. Two and two, that's what the Bengals finished. You've got to start and wonder, what, do you, what are your expectations uh, for them this season? Do you think they'll, should we say, finish with an even record, a losing record, a winning record, but not make the playoffs? Or will they make the playoffs? I've never been through three emotions like the last three weeks. The New, Orleans, or the, the New England game after the first half, I thought this was a playoff team. The Atlanta team, I thought, no, it's not a playoff team. Now the indie game, I don't know what to expect. Were they that bad? It's twos against twos. It's threes against threes. That first series where Peyton, saw Peyton Manning took them down, <laughs> that was enough to make you go, ooh, boy, is this what we're going to see all season long? So, you know, it's interesting. I, the, the preseason solved nothing and answered nothing for me. You feel the same way, Joe? Yeah, I think, you know, my thought is, and I've been saying it all preseason, I'm thinking they're about an 8-8 eight eight team. I think that's about what they've got in them. Uh, you know, you've got Carson as a new quarterback. Uh, he's got to, you know, get a little bit better at what he's doing. The defense scares the crap out of me this year. They just don't have a secondary. The defense has scared a lot of people, except maybe other teams' offenses. And you look at that schedule, and it's, it's, you know, eight and eight might not be such a it's, bad thing. It may not be a bad thing. Um, I, I tell you the truth, I'm not so as scared of the secondary. I think the secondary is better than what it's been in the past. Uh, you know, you, you've got question marks. Can Delpho O'Neill, you know, return to a form uh, that got him to a Pro Bowl a couple years ago? Marvin's, uh, you know hanging his hat on him uh, and that's you know gonna be uh, gonna be tough for him to live up to but uh, I, I really think can their secondary new, can, overall can he hang a new hamstring on him or something along those lines I mean, obviously you know, he's got to get on the field several someday. guys yeah. are in need of new body parts as we yeah. head into the regular season one guy though that stayed healthy and has looked relatively well is, is Carson Palmer what do you make of him after this two and two preseason or is it hard to even try to size him up. No, I, I think he's played pretty well. I mean, there's not one game where I go, boy, he's awful. I mean, even the, even the Atlanta game where he fumbled and threw the interception, you know, a lot of that, we talked about this last week, Joe and I did, was a lot of offensive line related because they got caught in blitzes and they probably weren't ready for the blitzes. And Carson, truth be told, probably wasn't ready for some of that. I have less questions about him than I do about any part of the defense. And that's, that's odd. I mean, there at least should be one part of the defense you can hang your hat on. I don't think they have that right now. You feel the same way about Carson? Yeah, I think, I think the, the big thing for Carson, if they can keep this offensive line healthy, that's going to be huge for him because you've got, if you can get Rich, Rich Brand back in the mix, making the calls for these guys because he is really going to be the quarterback on the field for Carson. If they can keep these guys healthy through the year, I think he'll be okay. But I still, I'm at that 8-8 eight eight deal. And when you, when you see Palmer and the way he's performed so far, 
is it one of those things where because he goes up against all the second and third teamers, it's really hard to evaluate how well he'll do? I think it's it's hard to evaluate anybody completely in, in preseason. Joe, I'm sure you know this as well as anybody else, but uh, you know you just don't get a full run in the preseason. Not like you will come that first week. I mean, the intensity picks up, everything picks up. Uh, you, you talk about getting a full run. You'd hope they could get a full run from some of their offensive linemen, but that's got to be one of the biggest questions heading into the season as far as injury-wise and everything else. You know, who's going to be able to go? And you got to have somebody to protect that starting quarterback. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, they were down to seven guys on Friday night playing on the offensive line. That's it. You know, usually in preseason, you got 12, 13, 14, down to seven guys. And Rich Bram, as Joe alluded to, he's big on two fronts. A, it allows Larry Moore to kind of be that swing guy. If Rich can't go or he's down for a couple of games, suddenly Larry Moore becomes the starting center. And then what happens to Eric Steinbach if he goes down? Larry Moore's the guy to plug in right there. He's your best backup at two spots. They really have some question marks if guys get hurt. I don't have any problems if guys are healthy, but injuries, they're in, they're in trouble. We saw some injuries with the secondary as well, and then we saw the secondary get blown away in a couple of big drives the last uh, two preseason games. You feel like that's a big concern right now, secondary? That's, that's my biggest concern. I mean, they've got some players there, but they're banged up number one, and, and the, what was it, five plays for Peyton last night? Torrey James got beat on that one play, and I'm thinking, you know, what are we going to do here, guys? We've either got to get pressure on the quarterback or these, these cornerbacks are going to have to play some ball and pick it up a little bit. I mean, we're going to get crushed on defense. And, and it, who, who would have believed that Madhu Williams would probably be their best cornerback right now? He was just drafted <laughs> as a safety. Yeah. I, I'll he, tell you what, honestly. He wasn't looking too shabby uh, on Friday night. The, the kid who really impresses me is uh, Terrell Roberts. I, I love watching him. He's, you know what, if he was two inches taller, he'd have been a first-round draft choice. I mean, it's the kid who really goes after, goes after things. But, but, Kevin, on that front, and, and Lonnie Wheeler in the Post wrote about it on Saturday, and I think he's right. Your two best corners right now, again, are a, are a safety in Madhu Williams and an undrafted guy in, in Terrell Roberts. That's a bad way to go when those that, are your two best corners right now. It goes back to, you look at the big turnover Marvin has had uh, over the last in, in two years he's been here. I mean, there's 17, 18 guys left from, from two years ago. I mean, that's how bad this franchise was two years ago, and he's completely turned it over. You talk about the secondary. I guess one of the big, biggest surprises, a pleasant surprise, has been in, at the linebackers, though. Caleb Miller has kind of stepped up and made the most of every opportunity he's been given. Could he be considered their biggest draft still right now? It's funny. When I was still at the post and was covering Kentucky, I saw him play twice at Arkansas and was so unimpressed with him just because he got blocked by college guys. But for whatever reason, that speed at this level, if he comes unblocked, he seemingly made some plays at this stage of the game. He's been impressive. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how it all plays out. Thanks, guys, for stopping by. Enjoy the 2004 Bengals season. Thank you very much. For more on the Bengals, log on to WKRC.com and check out Bengals Nation. While you're there, vote on the daily poll question and post a line or two on the Roar message boards. Local 12 is your home for the best Bengals coverage starting with Sunday. Marvin Lewis's 11 draft picks may have survived Sunday's big cuts, but a day later, receiver Maurice Mann is unable to hang on. The fifth round pick waived by the Bengals and replaced on the 53-man roster by former Redskins cornerback Rashad Bowman. The Bengals also scoop up Redskins receiver Cliff Russell and place him on the practice roster. Speaking of which, the Bengals add six others who cleared waivers to the practice squad today, including wide receiver Jamal Broussard and defensive end Elton Patterson. There is still one spot left. Fifth round wideout Maurice Mann back to join the practice squad, and they hope to get players healthy by Sunday. Brian Simmons, Eric Steinbach, maybe game time decisions. Delta O'Neill, Rich Bram hope to go in the opener in New York, where they haven't won in 23 years. I mean, I'm excited every season. I mean, every season you go out there, I mean, no matter what's the case, I mean, what's on the line is, is to play NFL football and, and to put your reputation on the line each and every game you go out in the field. So um, this season is no different for me. I mean, I enjoy coming out the opening week. I mean, enjoy going on the road, and, but I enjoy more now that we are a team that's, that's prepared better. Yes, they are. You can see the game right here. Home of the Bengals Nation, Bengals Weekly, 1130. The game is on at 1, local 12. I'll have your radio call for you on the Bengals have been nursing plenty of injuries during the preseason, but the hope was that all the health issues would be taken care of by the time Sunday's kickoff against the Jets rolls around. Today's first official injury report begs to differ. Now it reads like a mash unit. Backup Stacey Andrews and Robert Gathers are definitely out. Chris Perry is doubtful after injuring his hamstring Friday. Question marks for Delta O'Neill, Matt Schobel, Brian Simmons, just nine days after having his knee scoped, and Eric Steinbach may not be ready. Three guys probable, Rich Bram, Scott Kuster, and Terrell Roberts, but the healthy ones are certainly looking forward to the Jets. You, you can tell that there's a big difference. Um, just in meetings and, and walkthroughs, there's a, a completely different mindset um, just because of the transition from, from preseason being over. Now this is 
this is for the real thing. So I, I definitely think there's a different mindset for this team, which is great. That's going to be a big game, and you know I'm excited for this team and this this organization. You know to get out there and show everybody what we got. Here's your chance to win Bengals season tickets. Go to WKRC.com, enter the Pro Football Challenge, give us your picks, and uh, the grand prize winner receives a pair of 2005 Bengals season tickets. It's all free from Local 12. Tune in tomorrow at 6 and every Thursday during the Bengals season. We present the greatest Bengals super fans. Tomorrow, I'll have a close-up of John Clark from Anderson. There he is. He calls himself the Bengals' number one fan. Hey, don't forget. Maybe the fifth time is the charm for Marymount's Alex Sulfstead. The old lineman was signed again by the Bengals as they unexpectedly waived Victor Leva. The old line is hurting. Richie Braham and Eric Steinbach may not be able to go on Sunday. Willie Anderson's nicked up as well. Local 12 is your place for Bengals football as they kick off the season against the Jets. Sunday at 1 o'clock right here on Local 12. I'll have your radio call on 1360 Homer and 92.5 Fox. Since 1991, the Bengals have gone 10 and 39 in August and September. And they are all aware of that. I think we all know that. We all realize what happened last year. You know, we started off slow, one and three. If we would have won a couple of those games that we should have won, uh, we would have been in the playoffs. But, uh, you know, that's all hindsight, and, and this is a new year. So it's very important that we, we come out, you know, and, and start fast. And Sleep Out Louie is the place to be tonight. The unveiling of the Bengals' new 2004-2005 calendars. The ladies surprised by finding out if they were calendar girl material. You can buy your copy at Bengals Pro Shops.